العلاقة السعودية المصرية علاقة صلبة قوية في أعمق جذور العلاقات بين الدول لا تتأثر بأي شكل من الأشكال تاريخ مصر والسعودية دائما تقف مع بعضها في كل الظروف وفي كل الأوقات ولن يتغير هذا الشيء سمو الأمير إيران يعني هل فيه في المستقبل حوار تعامل مع إيران مباشر رغم ما تقوم فيه في المنطقة كيف تفاهم مع واحد أو نظام لديه قناعة مرسخة بأنه نظامه قائم على أديولوجية متطرفة منصوص عليها في دستورة ومنصوص عليها في وصية الخميني بأنه يجب أن يسيطروا على مسلمين العالم الإسلامي ونشر المذهب الجعفري الاثنى عشري الخاص فيهم في جميع أنحاء العالم الإسلامي حتى يظهر مهدي المنتظر هذا كيف أقنع وش المصالح اللي بيني وبينه كيف أتفاهم معه أنا لما يكون بيني وبين مثلا دولة أخرى إشكالية نبدا نحل لنا في والله مشكله اقتصاديه وش اللي تبغاه انت وش اللي نبغاه احنا كيف نتفاهم عليه في مشكله سياسيه مثلا مع روسيا كيف نتفاهم في سوريا وش مصالحك وش مصالحي كيف نتفاهم في اليمن وش مصالحك هذا كيف نتفاهم معه هذا منطقه ان المهدي المنتظر سوف ياتي ويجب ان يحضروا به الخصبه لوصول المهدي المنتظر ويجب ان يسيطروا على العالم الاسلامي وحرموا شعبهم لاكثر من 30 سنه من التنميه وادخلوه في مرحلة الجوع والبنية التحتية السيئة لتحقيق هذا الهدف لن يغير رأيه في يوم وليلة ولا انتهت شرعيته داخل إيران فوين نقاط الالتقاء التي يمكن أن نتفاهم فيها مع هذا النظام تكاد تكون ليست موجودة تم تجربة هذا النظام في أكثر مرحلة في وقت رفس جاني واتضعنا تمثيليات بعد ثورة الخميني تأتي استراتيجية التوسع حتى يغضب العالم ومن ثم يخرجوا قائد قائد السلم اللي وقتها كان رفس جاني حتى يكسب ثقة العالم ومن ضمنه احنا كسب ثقتنا وبعد الوصول إلى مرحلة أخرى وبيئة جيدة يتم إيصال قائد قوي متطرف لكي يستمر في عملية التوسع مثل ما شفنا مع نجاد في وثمان سنوات العراق وسوريا وغيرها من ال المواقع ثم ياتي قائد اخر لكي يحافظ على المكتسبات حتى يرضى العالم ومن ثم ياتي قائد متطرف لكي يستمر في نشر التوسع الدورات هذا لن يحدث هذا انتهى المؤمن لا يلدغ من الجحر مرتين لدغنا مره المره الثانيه لن لن نلدغ ونعرف انه احنا هدف رئيسي للنظام الايراني الوصول لقبله المسلمين هدف رئيسي للنظام الايراني لن ننتظر حتى تصبح المعركه في السعوديه بل سوف نعمل لكي تكون معركة لديهم في إيران وليس في السعودية. Local media there in Iran reporting that gunmen have opened fire this morning on guards at the country's parliament. The Mir news agency says eight people have been injured there. There are also reports that there is a possible suicide bomber inside the parliament. Security forces, of course, at the scene. Elsewhere in the capital as well, it looks like there are two separate events going on here. We don't know if they're tied in or not. Maybe. Another shooting we're hearing in another part of Tehran and a suicide bombing reportedly at the uh, mausoleum of Ayatollah Khamenei. It's believed that one person was killed there and a number of people wounded. It's not known at this stage who could be responsible for the attacks. We've got a number of guests lined up for the coming hours to try and get a handle on who it may well be and what the security political analyst and professor at the University of Tehran. Hi there, the details on this still a bit sketchy. Um, can you uh, tell us? So far, what you think has gone on there this morning from uh, your sources, and indeed, who is behind this attack? Because as it stands at the moment, no one's officially, I believe, come forward to say they were behind it or either set of attacks. Well, it's still ongoing, so we don't know exactly uh, what's happening. Uh, there are lots of uh, speculation right now when you um, speak to different people and on online as well. We all recall. Uh, that a few weeks ago the Saudi Deputy Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman uh, said that the war should be taken into Iran. And uh, the uh, Iranian first uh, Vice President, uh, Mr. Jahangiri, a while back said that the Saudis have attempted to carry out attacks in Iran on multiple occasions, but uh, Iranian intelligence has prevented them from doing so. So many people are speculating that this is this attack has been possibly carried out by Wahhabi groups, 
uh, linked to ISIS or uh, Al Qaeda or other groups because we do know that the Saudis were involved in the creation of these organizations so when we look at the WikiLeaks documents and the US mm. Defense Intelligence Agency documents and uh, Hillary Clinton's emails so the, the Saudis obvious, obviously have influence in these organizations mm. so of course the, the official line from the Saudi side the is that is not the case isn't it? It? the official line is that that's not the case yes, and even, course, if, but even the, if that has been even if that call that incitement was made we still don't know who is behind it but if let's follow it further down the line if it were to be proved that uh, what happened either of these events this morning in the center of Tehran this uh, carnage that has been caused if either of it were to be traced back to this uh, call for incitement from the Saudis what would the ramifications be well I think there would be major implications it's hard to say at this stage uh, because as you point out there are different scenarios one is that it may be completely uh, unrelated to Saudi Arabia which seems un uh, highly unlikely because of the way in which the attacks were carried out it po probably was either directly linked to Saudi Arabia or indirectly mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, the, uh, those groups who follow the Wahhabi ideology uh, carried out the attacks just like in Manchester and London where in, in, in England the attacks were definitely not carried out by the mm. Saudi regime but uh, the people who carried out the attacks were people who've been brought up with their extremist Wahhabi ideology mm. so if you look at it from that perspective it's quite likely that the Saudis were indirectly related uh, and of course when we take the statements of Mohammed bin Salman uh, that it could be something different also when uh, Trump puts his weight behind the Saudi regime like he did uh, over the past few days uh, there are people in, in Iran who believe that that is making the Saudis more aggressive yeah. and f feeling more comfortable and in maybe carrying, that out, was carrying out atrocities and, and maybe that's been the trigger behind what's happening re Qatar as well at the moment the timing of it all that's right the very fact that the Saudis have behaved in such an aggressive manner towards Qatar and now the Saudis are accusing Qatar of creating ISIS and uh, Al Qaeda and other extremist groups and supporting them uh, whereas uh, the Saudis themselves are uh, as guilty as anyone else of course many countries like the United States Britain France were all involved in in this catastrophe but I think one thing that comes out of this, and, and there's also one other thing that I should add, and that's a, a terrorist organization, the Mujahideen al which is now based in the United States and, is, uh, and in Europe, and has killed up to 17,000 people in Iran, and during the war they supported Saddam Hussein. They may be involved, because apparently a couple of the suicide attackers use cyanide pills to kill themselves, and that is what the Mujahideen al used to do and of course they have recently established very strong links with Saudi Arabia but of course all of this is speculation mm. but I think what comes out of all this is that the United States and its uh, allies in Britain and France and in the region regimes like Saudi Arabia have to put an end to uh, the promotion of these extremist mm. groups and if, if it is indeed the Saudis that are behind this then I think the implications will be enormous as it stands at the moment, uh, the, uh, the terror threat, if you like it, in Iran, where did it stand? I mean, we're often reporting on the uh, heightened state of terror alert in Europe, in Britain, in France, etc. What, what's the picture where you are then? And when will it be reconsidered in view of what's happened today? Whoever's behind it? Well, uh, the in different intelligence organizations in Iran have been. Uh, pointing out over the past few years um, different occasions where terrorist groups tried to infiltrate the country and th where they've been arrested and, other, and uh, also the uh, Quds, Quds brigades that have been helping the Iraqi government and the Syrian government in their fight against the extremists they've been monitoring events outside Iranian borders and indeed one major reason why the Iranians from the very beginning went to the aid of the Syrian government and the Iraqi government was because they knew that if the Syrians and the Iraqis fell mm. that the extremists would be our neighbors in Iran and then the war would be drawn inside Iran and the situation we would be seeing such attacks on a daily basis in there different is, cities. There's one uh, the Iranians from the very start of Syria were there is a yeah. quick line coming through. We've only got 30 seconds. And I wanted to put it to you and get a very brief answer. It seems uh, the Islamic State has said it was behind the attacks this morning on its AMAC news agency now to be confirmed. If that's true, 
that would be the militant group's first attack in Iran, would it not? Well, they've, ha they've attempted to carry out different attacks in Iran over the past few years, but their people were captured. Uh, but uh, the main, one main reason why the Iranians are in Syria and in Iraq was because from the very beginning in Syria, these groups were being funded from the outside, and the Iranians knew that if Syria and Iraq fell, then this catastrophe that we are seeing in these two countries and have been seeing will, will extend to Iran. So uh, it's, um, I think it's quite probable that ISIS was behind it. But at the end of the day, it's the Saudi Wahhabi ideology that is the main culprit. Mm -hmm. And Britain, France, the United States, they bear responsibility for the tragedy that we see across this region. Marvin Randi, political analyst, professor at the University of Toronto. Thanks for making the time to be with us today. We'll uh, stick across this story as well. Thanks very much. Thank you, you for can, of course, me. as well by uh, checking out our site, rt.com. And we're staying on air fully this hour as well if we get more in on that. Now Professor Head of Journalist Tony Gosling joins us from Bristol. When you heard about this, uh, multiple terrorist attacks that happened in Iran, two of them uh, in two different locations, what was your initial reaction, Tony Gosling? Well, uh, it's pretty shocking that ISIS has now decided, apparently, to uh, be targeting Iran as well. Uh, although, I suppose, since they're losing in Syria, this sort of thing is to be expected, you know, potentially attacks elsewhere. But the, the trouble is that when ISIS claim at something, as they have done today, you have to ask questions about those claims. But the Manchester attacks, when ISIS claimed those from Britain here, we heard from ISIS that there were several bombers, that there was nobody martyred in those claims. That was in Manchester. More recently in London, when ISIS claimed the attack on London Bridge, they got the wrong date. Uh, so you do have to question the sources of these. And, and in fact, ISIS themselves have questioned particularly Sight, uh, Rita Katz is, uh, as a source, saying that actually that, that she's just taking it from elsewhere and that uh, it's not, she's not reliable and that she's spinning stuff. So when there's an ISIS claim, we have to question that first of all. But look, let's go back to basics here, because we cannot stop terrorism. It, we can have a, a great deal of security, we can have a lot of police on our streets, but the whole uh, nature of terrorism is effectively that almost anybody could do this. If they can get hold of uh, guns, explosives, uh, they can kill people. We, we need to understand that. But what is the definition of terrorism? It is that these people should supposedly be non-state actors. So that's people who are uh, of no state at all. They don't have a, a government supporting them. Uh, and the trouble is that many terrorists nowadays do have governments secretly supporting them. Uh, for example, covert operations. We had Operation Gladio in Europe in the 1980s, where NATO intelligence services were helping terrorists, uh, fascist cells, to terrorize Europe. Uh, and it's quite clear that the, the main agencies doing this in the world today are Mossad, the CIA, and MI6 are covertly funding groups, uh, fanatic cells, uh, in order to cause uh, geo geopolitical changes. So that's one thing we need to really be careful at. Are these people self-inspired terrorists or are they being supported by a state? And I would say almost certainly the latter. That's certainly the proof with MEK, the previous group of terrorists that Iran has had to deal with, supported by the CIA and actually supported by the French intelligence too. Thank you for that. Investigative journalist Tony Gosselin from Bristol.